in this video i am going to discuss about uh, a couple of uh, frequently asked questions in uh, logistic regression uh, the first question that is often asked is uh, what is a logistic function uh, so why does this logistic uh, function used uh, and why does it is uh, it's used uh, to model binary uh, data well a logistic function uh, looks like this uh, uh, if y uh, it's is the variable for which we are trying to model it's uh, model as a x um, you know exponential of x divided by 1 plus exponential of x so uh, when you plot this uh, you will get uh, you know the graphical look uh, distribution look like this um, something like this i'm very bad at drawing okay i'll draw once again okay so if this is our axis uh, if this is 0 this is point 0.5 1 in this case so uh, the uh, y value um, is model as uh, exponential of x divided by 1 plus uh, exponential of x so uh, and this is uh, important and uh, this is uh, very suitable to model binary data for a couple of reasons uh, firstly um, we are actually trying to find out what is the probability of uh, uh, you know uh, categorizing you know the entire data into uh, two types uh, in logistic regression we always try to model for uh, a zero and one case right so the a, a data an observation is uh, you know belongs to the zero category or one category or true or false right hence uh, we try to know what is the probability of an observation falling into either of the categories right um, now what happens is that uh, we and this this is this is uh, you know this is uh, bounded right the probability values cannot be uh, greater than uh, 1 cannot be greater than 1 uh, it cannot be less than uh, 0 right so it has to always lie between uh, probability should always lie between 0 and 1 right um, now although this is continuous in nature but uh, uh, you know this is somewhat uh, bounded and uh, there is it's not good to really model for a bounded uh, quantity hence the probability uh, the uh, the logistic function ensures that uh, the probability uh, uh, the uh, quantity that we are modeling is uh, becoming unbounded so we do some sort of a transformation so uh, the transformation is like this we take the log odds so log odds is nothing but the probability of uh, you know happening of an event uh, divided by one minus of that event which is probability of not happening of that event uh, so this is the log odd and then we model our data set um, uh, with a linear function pretty much this is similar to what we do in a multi pole regression so beta naught plus beta 1 x when you do a transformation of of this when you take uh, the logarithmic to this side so this becomes exponential of exponential of beta naught plus beta 1 x and then you try to take uh, you know you do a couple of more steps and you will get p uh, like this the p is nothing but uh, this okay um, so now you see that when you take log odd log odd so p by 1 minus p uh, this value uh, is actually uh, has a range of minus infinity to plus infinity now this is not unbounded anymore so we actually do the uh, modeling or specification uh, by taking uh, the log odd as the dependent variable instead of uh, only the p value therefore the uh, logistic function uh, specification is very useful um, you know while modeling binary data or it at least is mapped to uh, the, um, the logistic functions so the specification has been uh, taken from logistic function 
um, there, there is a slightly uh, changed uh, version of uh, logistic function. Uh, if you, you know, read the logistic function, it is, uh, it is, uh, you know, more. It can be a little more generic. So it need not be like the, uh, you know, the y value in this case. I have restricted it to zero to one. It may not be so all the time. So that's why logistic function is. Uh, primarily used uh, to model binary data. Next question is why can't we use normal regression to model uh, for binary dependent variable. In this case uh, we have the binary dependent variable so why can't we use uh, normal regression. Uh, well there is a fundamental difference in the distribution of the data. When you have continuous data uh, and when you have binary data there is a fundamental uh, difference in the uh, distribution. So when you use um, the uh, OLS uh, to uh, you know estimate the parameters, uh, it it will not give you the uh, proper estimates or efficient estimates because uh, OLS estimation uh, assumes that your error uh, is normally distributed, right? Then you will get a closed form solution to that, right? Um, otherwise, you can use other forms like MLE uh, to find out uh, the uh, regression estimates, but the estimates are not going to be efficient enough because uh, the error is uh, not normally distributed when your dependent variable is categorical like 0, 1 form, right. So that is why uh, we do not use OLS, uh, we instead go for um, MLE um, and we ensure that uh, the uh, logistic uh, function uh, is used as a specification instead of uh, a simple um, you know uh, normal regression specification. So how is the interpretation of estimates of a logistic regression model differs from that of estimates of multiple regression model? Uh, if you see that the two types of uh, specifications are like this in, in multiple regression you have like y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x whereas in logistic regression you have log 1 minus p equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. So the purpose or uh, the objectives in, in, in these equations um, are different. Uh, in the first case, we try to know that if y goes up, uh, I'm sorry, if x goes up, what is the corresponding change in y? Uh, whereas in the second case, which is logistic regression, uh, we want to find out if x goes up, what is the probability that uh, you know a particular incident is going to happen, or you know uh, an observation is going to fall in uh, two categories like zero and one, right? So there is a difference, a fundamental difference in the specification of these models and the estimates cannot be uh, interpreted in the similar way. Uh, in the case of uh, the normal regression or the linear uh, regression, uh, you will see that when you take the first derivative to find out the marginal impact, that means uh, you know change in y change in y with respect to change in x uh, which is given by the beta 1 right. So change in y so you take the first de uh, derivative you will get the beta 1 which means it says that uh, uh, the change in y uh, when there is an unit change in x right. Whereas in the case of logistic regression that same interpretation cannot be used because uh, here we try to find out the change in the log odd when there is an unit change in x. So change in the log odd. So what is the log odd? Log odd is nothing but a logarithm of p by 1 minus p. Okay. Change in log odd when there is a uh, unit change in uh, x. So that is nothing but uh, your beta 1 in this case. Now we, you will uh, you must be thinking that uh, we are concerned about p. So we only get the log odds. Well, from the log odds, you can always get p. 
since we know the uh, change in log odds with respect to change in x you just do the transformation and get the values of for example log or uh, say ld is equal to uh, log of 1 minus p so how do you get p here well you get p by doing a transformation uh, that will be uh, log odd by 1 plus p to the power log odd, right so this is the transformation and you'll get back to p and that way you can also get back uh, you can also find out what is the change in p right so this little more uh, complicated mathematics involved in this case so uh, so the interpretation in log logistic regression is not that simple it's uh, it, it requires you to do a, a bit of uh, you know mathematical calculation to find out the change in probability when there is a corresponding change in the value of uh, your independent variables the next question is what is the significance of a roc curve um, in the logistic regression model the roc curves uh, helps in measuring the strength of the model so it tells us uh, how good is a model um, how well your um, you know model really fit your data set or how uh, So the ROC uh, tells us that uh, how well the model is able to uh, categorize <coughs> data into 0 and 1 or classify data. Uh, it's also used to compare uh, the uh, models. Uh, like you can see in the graph, uh, there are three ROC curves. We always expect that the area under this particular um, curve and the x-axis should be maximum. So, which is also known as the area under the curve, uh, which is given by the C statistic in the result. So, we always want the area to be maximum. The one with uh, the maximum area is, is the best model. So, when there are multiple models, you can always compare the strength of the models by uh, comparing the uh, ROC curves. The next question is what is uh, a likelihood ratio test in the context of uh, the logistic regression model? Uh, you know, for example, uh, say we have got two models. Um, you can see log of p by 1 minus p equal to 1 a plus b x1, where x1 is the uh, independent variable. And in the second model, I have added another variable x2. So, there are two independent variables here. Now, say for example uh, that uh, uh, we want to know by adding an extra variable uh, does it really help the model because uh, we are increasing um, we are decreasing the freedom or degree of freedom we are uh, you know making the model more complex by adding more variables does it really help the likelihood ratio tells uh, ratio test tells us if adding uh, more variables has statistically improved the fitness of the model has it really helped has it really helped by adding x2 to the model so uh, so what it does is it uh, statistically checks um, if the difference in the uh, predictive power of uh, of these models uh, in the difference in the uh, uh, you know the fitness rather um, is actually statistically significant or not if it is not statistically significant, then there is no point in adding a, uh, a new variable. So uh, there is a restrict, restricted model and there is a full model. So this is restricted model uh, where we have only one variable and there is a full model. Uh, so in other words, we can also say that by dropping one variable, uh, does it have any uh, significant change in the fitness of the model? So that is always known from the likelihood ratio test so every time you add a new variable uh, you always look at the likelihood ratio test uh, statistics and uh, see the significance level and uh, then decide whether to include that variable uh, uh, in the model or not so it really helps to select the best suitable uh, best set of uh, you know independent variables